everybody. Welcome to Nanny and the Mooses annual St. Patrick's Day video. Today you're going to find Moosey and Nanny in the kitchen cooking up one or two little things. And as well, Moosey is going to give you his top five things to do on St. Patrick's Day and you don't want to miss these. Year before, we did two videos. We did a big full Irish breakfast video with all the perfect things, the black pudding, the rashers, the bangers, the eggs, the beans, the tomatoes, the whole bit. And we also did another one of Irish stew with Irish soda bread and the sweet Irish bread. So I am suggesting that you watch those three videos. Last year's was all about the parties that we've had throughout the years here under the tent on St. Patrick's Day going way back. You'll meet all the family. kids, all the grown grandkids, all the little ones, and I think you'll enjoy them. So today we're going to do a little bit of a calmer one. And guess what? Moosey is going to break into song in the kitchen. Well, I want to thank all our subscribers for supporting our last video. You overdid yourself. You loved our mat. You love the 10 things that make our life easier. We had some good ones, didn't we? Especially that car handle and those refrigerator Lazy Susans. Some great tips. I also want to welcome all our new subscribers. You're going to enjoy our channel as we journey through the latter years of life and have tons of fun as we're doing it. And I'm going to ask you to come on to the kitchen where you're going to find Moosey and I having some fun. If you think that you might enjoy this totally entertaining St. Patrick's Day video, stay tuned. Moosey's in a great mood today. It must be the fact that St. Patty's Day is coming. Before we leave our living room, I do want to point out our new St. Patrick's Day little vignette on the fireplace. My green candles just came in the mail about 15 minutes ago, just in time for the video. You know, um, tapers candles are very hard to find. The only place I could find them was online. So I have those. Moosey put the batteries in our little twinkle green lights for you. and. The floral arrangement, in fact, they're a little bit droopy. They need a little bit of water. That is a plant of Irish shamrocks. And some of the shamrocks, this is a funny story. I have to tell you this story. Oh, I don't know how many years ago, probably in the late 70s, when my mother and father were in their late 70s, my brothers got together and sent them to Ireland for a two-week trip. Now, they lived back in New Jersey, and they were so excited they couldn't believe it. Both my mother and father's parents were born in Ireland, and so they were going back to, oh, the name of the town, Ruski on the Shannon River. They were going back there. I think at that time there were still some relatives living over there. And then they were gonna do a car trip, believe it or not, in their late 70s, all the way looping around from Dublin, all the way down to the south and back up again. So they did, and they had the most wonderful time. My mother enjoyed the food and she kept writing back about all the food and the wonderful things they were doing. And they drove, believe it or not, my mom and dad took turns driving on the other side of the road over there. Didn't have an accident, they, they had a great time. 
However, when they got to Ruski, there is a was a bed and breakfast there that has been in the family, my mother's family, for quite a while. I think it was a cousin of my mother's who owned it. And so this was the land of, of, of her heritage. So what she did was she dug up some dirt that had some straw and a few little Irish shamrocks in it from the family property in Ruski. And she put it in, actually it was quite a big clump of it. Of it. And she put it in a big plastic bag. And you're, you're gonna laugh at this. My mother was a hoot. She came home on the plane because you know you're not allowed to bring plants and food and stuff home from a foreign land. She put that plastic bag of dirt, stuffed it in her girdle. Now girdles are a thing of the past, but I'm sure a lot of you ladies remember girdles. And she rode home all the way back to New Jersey with that big wad of dirt and straw and Irish shamrocks in her girdle. When she got home a few weeks later, she's very creative. In fact, that's where I think I get my creativity. She made these resin, little resin ornaments for my brothers and myself and gave them to us and inside the resin where she put all the dirt and straw and one or two shamrocks. In fact, if I can find it, I will show it to you maybe in the next video. And she cut out from magazines the word Ireland and we got these. They're sort of um, like what you would call paperweights and they're beautiful, but my mother carried all that home. So we have little bits of Irish shamrocks that have come from my mother's girdle. And that's my story for now. So I just wanted to share all our little, we have a little Irish cross up there, Celtic cross. And my outfit is adorned with the, uh, actually these are Scottish. These are kilt pins that the men wear on this plate, which is, this big piece of tartan which goes over the shoulder. And the stone is from the Cairngorm Mountains in Ireland, but they do wear all this regalia in Ireland as well. And my beret uh, also has, I think, a peacock feather from somewhere over there. I do have the kilt on, and I have a story about that. My, you will see the kilt when we're in the kitchen. The kilt goes to the floor and we had it made when we lived in Scotland in the late 60s. At the time, I was 117 pounds. We had four little children at that point, young children, and then we had two more after that. But the skirt no longer wraps all the way around on me. I can still wear it, but I did have to kind of sew it up and it doesn't wrap all the way around me anymore. But that skirt and this, the whole outfit, goes back to the late 70s, where we also had a, a big giant nine by 12 rug made in the same tartan. And uh, we brought home a bunch of this fabric and I made a cape, black wool cape for myself that has this lining. It's a big circle cape and it, it is lined with this fabric and also um, the hood. And you'll see the whole outfit in the video that we made last St. Patrick's Day. I modeled it outside and my granddaughter took a picture of the cape and I spread the cape out and the whole story. So if you want to see all that, do go. The videos will be in the description box down below the video. And all you have to do is click that little arrow, down arrow, and then the videos will be there. Just click on the videos. So that's it. Come on to the kitchen now.
These pork sausages are called bangers because when they fry, they pop and make all kinds of noises. I already have the onions sauteing for the brown gravy and, and the potatoes are boiling. During World War I in Europe, they didn't have enough meat to be able to fill the sausages. So they filled them with water and a lot of wheat. And that's why they popped and sizzled. And that's why they're called bangers. We're assembled in the kitchen for our St. Patty's Day meal. Well, hello. You look comfy and you're all ready to eat this meal. Shall I explain to everyone? I did do a few little snippets as we were cooking this and let me show you what we have all ready to go. All right, as you know, these are what we call mash. The meal is called bangers and mash. And we'll explain why they're called bangers and mash. So here's the mashed potatoes. I've put buttermilk in them, butter, and a little bit of my parsley from my garden on top. In here is our onion gravy loaded with onions with a tiny shot of Guinness in there, just to make it Irish. And here are the bangers, real Irish bangers. And they're perfectly cooked, about 40 minutes cooking after browning and banging, and you heard the banging and the popping, and Moosey is going to tell you Entertain Don't forget you this a gorgeous bit. bread over here. Oh, right. Over here on this side, we have. Ooh, that smells good. I mean, yeah. It's, um, this is the Irish soda bread, which is the, the bread that's not as sweet as the other one. This has raisins, and it's made with no yeast, just buttermilk. And the buttermilk gives it the acidity <clears throat> mixed with baking soda that you might get from yeast, and that's what makes it rise. So we have that here, and Moosey is going to entertain you for a little while. <laughs> That's hard. Ooh, look at that. Now, where'd you get that glass? That is New York Fire Department uh, pipe and drummer, pipe and drums 50th anniversary souvenir glass. That's a mouthful. And you must have gotten that in the 80s. 2012. 2012, wow. But you know, look at the head come up on that. Isn't that gorgeous? Can I see that? You that know, nice and close. this fire department, Pipe and Drums, Bill, our son Bill, founded the same thing here in LA. He did. Which is still running. Bill was the uh, Piper, you know, the guy with all of the guys. He, he's the one that wore the big high black fur oh. hat. Picture of that baby, we right? could, we will. And also, um, he retired, but that band is still going great. Yep. 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 Anyway, Slanja. Slanja. How is it? You're drinking before you're eating. I'm going to go ahead and um, dish out your meal here for you. Now That's an acquired taste, by the way. Is it? So, I mean, well, well people... I never acquired it, so I don't take part in it. Okay, here's how we do this. <laughs> We put the, the mash, as we call it. Now, some people might call this British, but you know, a lot of the Irish dishes did originate in, um, in Britain to begin with. I'll give you all these, I have more. This is our supper tonight, by the way. So, the mash goes on the bottom, right here, and then we take the sausage, and these are real Irish bangers. Pork, by the way, it's pork. And then we lay that on top. And then in here is the dark gravy, onion gravy. And here we go. That's enough. Oh. Ah. Too much? Oh, God. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, there. Now let me show them. This is what it looks like. Your typical Irish bangers and mash, which Moosey is going to drown himself in, right? <coughs> he's gonna, he's gonna uh, try it. Okay, 
There you go. Ooh, looks good. As you're trying to eat this, try a... Uh, what are these uh, five things that you're talking about that you want everybody to do on St. Patrick's Day to keep themselves smiling and with a big Irish smile on their faces? Is that guaranteed, by the way? So good. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Yummy. What's the best part? How are the sausages? Sausages are done just right. And that gravy, the onion gravy, I just love it anyway. I do too. You know, we put that um, uh, onion, dark uh, onion gravy on our toad in the hole, which is sausages in Yorkshire puddings. What's bubble and squeak? Bubble and squeak is cabbage, mashed potatoes, and a lot of these Irish dishes are made from the leftovers and almost always include potatoes. And, and the bubble and squeak is that they fry the cabbage, it's kind of the same as cold cannon, except that they fry the cabbage, and as the cabbage cooks on the frying pan, it gets crispy and it squeaks, and that's why they call it bubble and squeak. What do you think of that? I think you just made that up. No, I didn't. I didn't, no. There's a lot of funny names. There's boxty which are basically Irish potato pancakes, and they're delicious. My grandmother used to make those. I've made those. Uh, what's another funny one? Well, cold cannon is the leftovers the day after. Do you know that, that the Irish do not eat corned beef? We associate St. Patrick's Day with corned beef and cabbage, and they don't eat corn, the corned beef. That's the funny thing about it. That's an American dish. Corned beef is what built the railroads because they had Irish workers and they corned, they corned beef, preserve it in big barrels, put it on the train following the workers who were building the railroad and that's what they would eat because it was preserved. And this was in America. Brand, brand, yeah. yeah. But, but the workers were all Irish. That's interesting. So tell them some of your, your start with your five things here. <clears throat> Well, the first one started when we were just in primary school. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. And the way it worked was, if you weren't wearing green on St. Patrick's Day, they could pinch you. You know, it didn't matter whether you were Irish or Italian or Polish or German. In our school, there was all kinds of people, but anybody could pinch you if you didn't have green on. I remember, oh, watch that. It. I remember that when we were kids in school. That was a big thing when you were in school. Now, the other thing that we, first of all, we would always do is go to the parade. And we went to the one in New York. New York, yeah. New York goes down Fifth Avenue, I think it's about five mile, five mile route. And my buddies and I would go off the bus on Eighth Avenue. And we go into a couple of bars. Never made it to Fifth Avenue. Never saw a St. Patrick's Day parade. Now I know you were in one. That's why you never saw me on St. Patrick's Day because my school, I went to an all girls school in upstate New York, about an hour up from New York City. And we had to march in the St. Patty's Day parade, the whole school in our black caps and gowns and high heels and white gloves <laughs> <laughs> every year. The other thing you had to do, besides having a Guinness, is tell a joke. So everybody came with their jokes. For instance, you remember the leprechauns running around? Yeah. You couldn't get a loan from them. Why couldn't you get a loan from a leprechaun? Because they were short. This is number three. You gotta tell a joke. You gotta tell an Irish joke. So you gotta look them up, right? Yeah, but all day long and into the night and in the rain, who stayed outside? Leprechaun. No. No. Patio furniture. Well, I, got oh, one, oh. I got one more. Okay. Right, well, you have to have a okay. joke. Three guys go in the bar. Englishman, Scott, Irishman. They get their pints. Oh goodness, oh boy. And the Englishman looks at his pint. There's a fly in it. 
and he goes, eh, this is the way I like it. Eh. Scott looks at his, he sees a fly, takes it up, throws it down, and drinks it fine. The Irishman, he looks at the fly at his, he picks it up and he spit it out, you terrible old thing. That's funny. So anyway, that's the other thing. Parades, pinching, wearing the green, jokes. Oh, I know one. This what? is your fifth. Oh, you want me to sing? That's your fifth one. Okay, let me get a mic here. Hang on. And I guess we all know what you're going to sing. Yes. Danny Boy. The pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. You know this one? Yes. Well, you guys sing along. That's, oh, that's whoa, the fifth one. Whoa, you in the back. You sing too. Yeah. I see Kathy. you. Sing. Okay, Kathy. Teeny and Gwen, come on. We're all going to sing. Ready. Oh, Daddy, oh, Daddy boy. boy. The pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. Good job, everybody. So these five things that Moosey's telling you it's to working. do are going to keep you happy on St. Patrick's Day. Going to make you smile, give you lots of joy whether you're Irish or not. Good job, Mosey. How's the bread? Delicious. So... Can I pinch you? Oh, you're, wearing, oh, you're wearing green, sorry. <laughs> I'm wearing green. <laughs> so, everyone, while Mosey finishes his um, bangers and mash here, I want to thank sure. you all for joining us on our St. Patty's Day video, which will come out a few days before St. Patty's Day. And I hope you all have a wonderful day, whether you're Irish or not. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for all your thumbs up, all your support, and your subscribing. And we will see you in a couple of days. I hope so. Give them an Irish toast, Moose. Sluncher, you in the back. Sluncher, hold your glass up. There you go. Bye for now. <laughs> Say it with me, Moose. God bless, bless us, us all. all.